All right, I think we got I think we got the whole crew here. Let's kick it off. So let, let me just start. Um, yeah, so this is the sixth community call and protocol. Exciting. Um, uh, you know, so actually later today, we also have an AMA uh, with Axelar. Um, that's at 3 p.m. Eastern, 20 UTC. Um, so that's in about, what, two and a half hours? Um, so if you're free, you want to join that. That's also happening um, on the InterProtocol Twitter. Um, so, yeah, let's dive right into it. So, um, you know, I think uh, someone had brought up uh, the fee topic. Um, so maybe, Dean, you want to touch on that? I think it's an interesting one. Huh, sure. Yeah, this is, um, you know, as an act of chain, now we have people trying to, uh, 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 you know, beat on it in various ways to extract value or, or squeeze their trade into or, or whatever it is. And so we were noticing um, a bunch of, effectively spam activity that was slowing down real transactions. Um, we knew that would come, um, uh, and it was just a question of when. Uh, Cosmos infrastructure has plenty of support for, you know, basically placing small fee on transactions in order to discourage spam. And so that, so that was turned on on the chain. Um, eventually, all of that will be, you know, paid for by IST and, and, and all of the in- JavaScript in smart contract transaction fees are all uh, paid in, in, in IST. But at the Cosmos level for doing IBC transactions and that sort of stuff, it's really, it's really convenient right now and really valuable right now to be able to have it paid in, uh, in BLD, which is what you use to set up a wallet. And, and it's what all of the, the people who have purchased you know, tokens to participate in the, in the, in the uh, Agoric chain have. And so... Uh, the system is configured generally, I mean, or, or validators are encouraged generally, configured to accept fees in both build and IST for low-level transactions. Um, Kepler is set up so it defaults to build, but it actually will support both build and IST. And the fees are in the, um, uh, you know, uh, thousandths of a cent range, right? So, it's, so it is, so you must have one. And if you are spamming, it will eat you alive. But if you are doing normal business, it will be uh, vanishingly small and entirely unnoticeable. This is not a this is not a source of revenue. This is a source of of, of spam prevention, um, and 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 really and and really will help you know make sure that people ha who have legit stuff to do will be able to get that done. So. And as usual, you can there are three different fee grades. So. Um, uh, one thousandth of a penny, uh, two thousand or one thousandth of a dollar, I guess. I, I guess that's a tenth of a penny, two tenths of a penny, and six tenths of a penny um, in IST or in um, essentially uh, uh, the equivalent in BLD. So that's the that's the 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 uh, that's the the fee structure. Okay. Got it. Yeah, no, that's great. I, I, there were a lot of questions coming in around that since it was turned on. So that's yeah. really helpful. Thank you. Yep, yep. And that was, you know, and, and fees are, are, are the, the fees at the level we're talking about here is for submitting a transaction to the network to get into the mempool. So it is up to the validators, right? And so it may vary by which connection, which pathway, which validator these transactions come in on. And so, you know, the validators come to gradual consensus about this discussed in, 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 in various places. Um, Jesse has a, a has a post um, to provide the background for this in the community.agoric.com um, uh, discourse, and people should go there to talk about it if they have questions or suggestions. And this will evolve over time. Right now, we're using the native simplest uh, fee structure to the spam prevention, but this will wire into uh, more general fee and prioritization mechanisms over time. Got it. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so something else that we got a lot uh, of discussion about was the, um, you know, obviously, IST pools on Osmosis and Crescent, you know, the, the, the kind of incentive structures around those, that would be kind of <laughs> worthwhile to bring up. Um, yeah, look, well, let's ask Yusuf talk about that. <laughs> Yusuf and Zucky, they're the ones that, <laughs> Zucky's the ones that did a lot of the help for the, a lot of the setup. <laughs> Oh, wait, he moved, he changed account. So I, oh, no, there you are. Go for it. I'm here. Okay. I wasn't sure if I was talking or Yusuf was talking. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we have, uh, we have sort of incentivized, uh, build incentivized IST pools. Um, we have a stable swap, essentially. We have uh, 
ranged liquidity that is incentivized on Crescent. Um, uh, and it was, it, it was encouraging to see. I think I, I looked at it this morning and there's like $350,000 each in liquidity, I think, at least um, in each of the pools, um, which was uh, intriguing, uh, which was like a really good uh, – uh, uh, it was like really encouraging to see. Um, and uh, we have uh, an incentivized Osmo IST. I mean, my vision for all of this is – to really just, we want to make IST available on basically every significant um, DEX venue in the Cosmos ecosystem so that people um, can use it as their preferred stablecoin um, easily from uh, where things were. And, you know, I think this is uh, specifically in the interests of the builder community, of the like build community um, uh, to, uh, to, to further this activity. Yeah, and also I want to add that I think that the arrival of Dai is going to help a lot. Uh, been spending some time uh, on Twitter, and you know people have concerns saying that it's centralized because we're backed only by uh, for now by USDC and USDT. So Dai is going to help us move away from that centralized uh, narrative. Not to mention that obviously it it is a, a great asset. And there is a there's a thread discussing it, I think, in community uh, uh, dot dot com as well, right? Under the in in the inter, it um, is uh, yes yes correct. And so the the someone uh, suggested to add it to add die, but uh, the Axler version, and uh, with the with the econ committee, uh, we found alignment on also suggesting to add uh, gravity. Uh, because mm -hmm. I, we think it, it's important to have uh, both uh, bridges, and uh, yeah, so we see uh, uh, where the discussion discussion goes. But we're confident that it's gonna should happen fairly soon. Awesome. Nice. And do you have? Do, do you have? Uh, I'm I'm curious, and maybe this is covered in the thread. Um, uh, have you talked about the, cause you know, everything gets added with a minting limit. Have you talked about what the, 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 the minting limits would be and how that relates to the current minting limits? Yeah. So, so we have the call, uh, in, uh, about an hour and a half and, uh, I don't know if you're aware, but, uh, the USDT, uh, graph is already filled, has been filled for, uh, almost a week now. Mm -hmm. Um, so we need to figure out like, what are we doing? <laughs> uh, because we're only using 20% of the total debt limit as of today, uh, but USDT Grav is failed. So should we uh, rebalance, uh, take some from USDC and put it into USDT, and we also need to take into consideration DAI. So we'll discuss that in about an hour with the, with the econ. Awesome. Thanks. Pleasure. Awesome. So I, I kind of want to, well, Dean, I don't know if or anyone else wants to touch on, on that point. Well, actually, I, I, I wanted to go back. Yusuf, earlier, you mentioned that, you know, seeing uh, uh, IST show, showing up on Gravity, uh, or sorry, showing up on, on, on Crescent, currently larger than Osmo. Crescent has the incentives active. The Osmo ones are in flight. So, so I, I just, the, you know, I think that that's sort of the, 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 um, uh, the reality well, also, where it got the momentum going on the... Crescent. Go ahead. The risk profile, just for a liquidity provider on Osmo and um, on Osmosis and um, and uh, Crescent are very different, right? Um, the the you are you are in a stable swap essentially um, yes. in uh, on on Crescent right now. So you're there is no underlying uh, impermanent loss risk, assuming um, some no you know. No issues with the IST mechanism and nothing like mm -hmm. a tether, you know, uh, no tether DPEG or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, like Black Swan event, there's you take you, there's Black Swan event risk, but there is not um, day to day impermanent loss risk. Whereas, if you are in the Osmo uh, uh, IST pool right now, um, you you are taking on impermanent loss um, mm -hmm. uh, risk. Uh, if, you know, uh, should Osmo uh, appreciate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. So you know, we'll, it'll be it'll be uh, interesting to see how those how 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 people uh, move their assets. 
across those two different things. And it is so great to be connected to multiple, you know, high quality change in this area and be able to, to do that. And as, as you said, I'm looking forward to, to, to connecting to others on, on chains like Evmos and Juno and such. I think like one of the, one of the interesting things that has been, you know, the experience of doing uh, between like strategy token launch on SOM and uh, uh, IST launch, um, you know, with these different kinds of assets, especially assets that it takes sort of real money to create the asset. So like IST, you need to show up with real dollars to make IST. Um, to make strategy tokens, you need to show up with real dollars to make strategy tokens. Um, these are very different assets than like, you know, um, than like typical governance tokens that are created from thin air. Um, and, uh, you know, it's it's amazing. On one hand, it's like um, it, like more and more of the pieces of the Cosmos DEX ecosystem um, and the wider DEX ecosystem are like coming to peace, coming together um, to make it like possible to do interesting things with these assets. But on the other hand, um, you have this, uh, uh, you know, like, oh, like we would really like there to be stable swaps and ranged liquidity on all of the DEXs um, uh, uh, in the ecosystem. That would be really amazing. But we'd also like to have, you know, the kind of depth of information that we get off osmosis on every chain in the ecosystem. Um, and, you know, all of these things, it's just like, okay, like, there's still a lot of, like, uh, uh, potholes um, in, in, in the DEX ecosystem to, to overcome. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. The, it, all, we, we are still in a phase where all of them could learn from each other and um, we will all be better off if they lift each other's best features um, to really raise the bar on on decentralized finance in the Cosmos ecosystem. <laughs> yep. We should unashamedly uh, copy these good ideas around. So I want to I want to kind of pivot a bit. I, I, I you know. We have the DCF on this call, you know, Rick. I I I'd love to kind of hear what's going on <laughs> in the DCF world. Thanks, Santi. I appreciate that. Uh, DCF, a couple of things for the community. First, just in terms of of basic news, uh, happy to announce that we have filled the fourth seat on our board of directors. Uh, we filled that seat with a, a very fine individual named Silky Noah El Rifai. Silky is a crypto lawyer and coder. Uh, some of you may know her from her association with Gnosis, where she was the uh, general counsel and the chief legal officer. Uh, we're really lucky to have her. Uh, she's got a big old brain that is very, very focused on this space, and she is very DeFi friendly as well. Uh, she brings us some expertise and some uh, European focus uh, that the board was lacking. So welcome, Silky. Uh, second, I wanted to highlight for the community that the Economic Committee compensation proposal is currently in its discussion period on uh, discourse, uh, and that's community.agoric. Uh, the discussion so far has been very, very lightweight. Uh, note that we're asking the community to ask DCF to pay for the budget related to the economic committee. And that budget goes to covering compensation for the individuals and also just basic overhead for the EC. Uh, DCF is on board with this. So if the community feels this is appropriate, we're happy to shoulder that cost. Uh, and certainly I think the numbers are very reasonable given the, the expertise and the seniority of the people that are on the economic committee. But I just wanna flag that for you. Please engage with that if you're interested in engaging and of course vote when the time comes and that'll be happening very soon. Uh, and then the last thing I wanted to highlight for the group today is, you know, we're, we're at a transition period with the inter-protocol and IST. And what I mean by that is Agoric has really, you know, led the way in terms of getting us to a launch and on the development side of this. And yes, I know we've got vaults coming and other exciting things coming and Agoric Opco continues to play an important role. But we're in a transition right now where this now needs to be increasingly managed by the community. And this is something that DCF really is dedicated to supporting and, and helping motivate people to take lead on this. So stay tuned. There's going to be more activity coming out of uh, DCF in relation to building community interaction and really establishing community governance around uh, the inter protocol. And that's super important and the community needs to step up and get engaged in that. Uh, you know, Agoric has other fish to fry, other irons in the fire, whatever you want to say. 
they're a development company that's got other projects going on. The community needs to jump in and take ownership on this and lead. DCF's there, happy to support, uh, but expect to see more coming down the pipe uh, on that topic in the near future. And that's all I have for you today, Santi. Back to you, sir. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, I'll open up if anyone else wants to add to, to, to Rick's, uh, Rick's updates there. Uh, if not, we can kind of – I have some other things I'd, I'd love to kind of hear about. So I had something to add to Rick's update, but I know I'm also speaking next. So uh, I can seg into myself if that's fine. Yeah, go for it. All right. Um, yeah, so, you know, Rick, Rick brings up that Agoric Opco has, has uh, you know, other development projects that are sort of being worked on. I, I think it's clear, it needs to be clear that that's sort of focused on chain level development, right? So there's a whole bunch of stuff that needs to happen at the chain level to, to make the Agoric chain and the Agoric platform um, sort of get it to the right place where it needs to be for mainnet three. And so, you know, yes, obviously the software development around inter protocol is something that we're focused on, but um, a lot of, a lot of the effort also is, is sort of lower level smart contract framework, kernel level kinds of work. Um, and so, um, you know, w w with that, I, you know, I have a few updates that I wanted to go through. Um, one was just just looking at interprotocol from an analytics standpoint. Um, and for anyone that doesn't know, there is a dashboard at analytics.inter.trade, uh, which shows some details on on where it's at. And Yusuf mentioned earlier, but we are, um, I, I saw almost 950,000 IST had been minted. Um, somewhere in the neighborhood of 350 uh, uh, Agoric wallets had been created. And, and for those of you that haven't done it, you actually need to use build to purchase a wallet right now. Uh, and so that is a sort of a meaningful metric of, of people that are involved. Um, Yusuf also described uh, hitting minting limits around uh, USDT gravity, um, which was an interesting development. We actually saw... Um, during some of the market instability last week, um, or I guess this week, I've lost track of time. Um, we, we, we saw actually a few folks that seem to be potentially arbing through the PSMs. Uh, and so that's something that the econ committee flagged as it was happening. Um, and I imagine that's probably a topic of conversation in their meeting today. But interesting to just already see, you know, the, the PSM contracts be relevant in the, the general DeFi ecosystem in that way. And so that, that was sort of interesting to, you know, I, I imagine somebody was either moving out of USDT into USDC or something along those lines. Um, I, it's also worth uh, talking quickly about just what we've seen so far in terms of peg stability. Um, you know, it, one of the goals in launching the PSM software first was to really focus around making sure that inter-protocol and IST is able to gain users' trust around around the peg, which really is is sort of the core stablecoin offering. Um, and what we what we've seen, and and the best way to see this actually, if you want to see it yourself, is info.osmosis.zone. Um, that's where IST has been trading the longest. Uh, and if you hit the Frontier tab, um, you can look at IST price over time. And early on, you saw some variation as the, the Osmo IST pool was uh, the only place trading and it was low liquidity. But over the past week or so, things have gotten quite tight. Um, and even, even during the, the, the you know, instability we've seen in the markets, uh, we really only see one sort of minor spike in IST price. Um, and, and that was up to 1.04 or 1.03 or so, which immediately drop back down and it looks like we've been sort of between 99 and 101 um, for the last week, which, you know, given the amount of liquidity and given the lack of trading and, and other ARB possibilities, uh, that looks quite good right now. Um, and I imagine now that Crescent pools are live, we're going to see that remain tight over time. So that's been encouraging to see. Um, and I, I guess lastly, uh, and I know we're, we're running up on time, so I'll, I'll be quick here, I uh, wanted to talk about vaults. So the big effort on the inter-protocol side from Agoric Opco is launching the vaults contracts. Um, right now, uh, we are closing in on finalization of the liquidation design, which is going to start with a, a Dutch auction of collateral. Uh, and so building that out, getting getting input from uh, economic advisors and, and various stakeholders around how that should design how that design should work and any issues that we see there but 
um, targeting sort of a, a Q1 2023 timeframe for the Vault's launch. So uh, all that's looking good. We've kind of gotten things quite organized and, and feeling good about, about that launch. So I know that really that's the product that inter-protocol users are most excited about. And so we, we certainly want to push that forward uh, with urgency. So um, I know that was fast, but I, I was low on time. So I'm going to turn it back to, to Santi here. No, that's good. I'll, I mean, I'll open the floor because you, you said a lot there. So there's probably some, you know, if anyone wants to chime in there, go for it. I think he covered everything I would hit. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah. I, so I, I, yeah, no, yeah. So, sorry, Santiago. Yeah, I just wanted to, uh, to add that uh, um, Chris Berg, so another member of the Econ Committee and myself, will be uh, on a podcast on uh, Monday to talk exclusively about uh, IST uh, with um, the stacking uh, validator who has a channel on uh, on YouTube and uh, and yeah, so I'm doing some additional work basically to uh, to grow uh, the visibility of IST on uh, on other podcasts. We also had uh, last week Roland Santiago and myself um, a call a podcast with the uh, Binance Lab Zero X four nine nine, which got I think almost three thousand five hundred views. Um, and for us, uh, the Economic Committee. Uh, in the short term, what we're going to work on is uh, basically align on a framework to to uh, onboard new uh, collateral for votes. So I think this is uh, this is going to be critical. But the good news is we we have time to come up with uh, something comprehensive and uh, and solid. And uh, and and the immediate term uh, today we'll be discussing, like I mentioned, um, the minting limits. Uh, whether we do something about USDT graph or we just uh, leave it uh, as is. Great, awesome, thank you. Yeah, looking forward to that podcast. That's you said that's Monday. That's coming Monday. Yeah, yeah, next Monday. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, we'll uh, we'll make sure to to push that out so people can join. Um, yeah, so I you know. Uh, Kind of following up to you, Yusuf, you know, we, you know, again, just a reminder, we have an AMA with, uh, with Axelar, uh, later today at 3 p.m. It's in about two hours now. Um, so definitely stop by. It'll be on the, uh, Inner Protocol Twitter again. Um, and I think our next community call is December 15th. Um, you know, pretty far out at this point. So we'll, we'll, we'll make sure to set reminders for folks, um, that can join that. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. Is there any, uh, any other questions or, or, you know, thoughts anyone wants to bring up from the uh from the uh from the stage right now well i have to say uh, as you know driving the on on a lot of the software development and so forth the fact that it that there's now all this stuff happening that you know by people that are expert at things that i'm not expert at and it's just all happening with you know uh, um, independent and growing and 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 flourishing out on the cosmos ecosystem um, where I get to now watch is just an, is just an amazing delight so so it, you know it feels like the, the 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 you know the ball is rolling on IST and that's really exciting so I um, thank you all for all your participation and help and frankly for using it <laughs> awesome awesome okay yeah um all right. Well, thanks uh, all for joining. If you do have questions, you can definitely stop by the uh, Inner Protocol Discord. All the links are in uh, um, on the website, on the Twitter. Um, yeah, drop in, say hello, ask questions. Um, we're around, and uh, yeah, thanks for everyone. And if you have, who, have uh, thought pieces, go to community.agoric.com and, yes, and uh, have yeah. long term, long lived discussion there. Yep. Absolutely. Cool. Awesome. Thank all you right. all. All right. Good stuff, everybody. Have a great day. You too. Bye.